Hello boys and girls, my name is Mr. Kapengwe. I know we've met before and I'm going to be your maths teacher today. We're going to learn about a circle and this is a shape that most of you are familiar with. I have a few things here that I want to show you. We have this plate, though it is white, it's still a beautiful plate and this plate is circular in shape and we know what a circle is all about. A circle is an interesting shape and we need to learn more and more about it. What is a circle? If somebody asked you what a circle is, what answer would you give them? Many people give different answers, but a circle is a shape that is flat. So a circle is a shape that is flat and we know very well to say a circle looks like the one that I've drawn. Using freehand is not very nice, but I'm sure that you can also draw that as well. Before I go further, let me also say a few things about a circle. If you look at a ball and a circle, they are two different things. Most of you say that the ball is round and you mistake that to be a circle. A circle is not really round as such. If you use the word round, you need to add the word flat. So a circle is a round, flat shape. It's not the same as a sphere or anything that looks like a ball. So a circle is an interesting shape and it has many things that you still learn about today. The first thing that I want to tell you about a circle is that a circle is the only shape that does not have corners. And it's interesting and I know you believe it. A circle doesn't have any corners. So when we talk about a circle in mathematical concepts, we know that a circle has names that are associated with it. The first one that I'm going to discuss with you is the circumference. And this means the distance around a circle. If somebody went round the circle like this, the distance that person covers from point where the person started back to the same position is called the circumference. And circumference is the first component of our circle. Let me write slowly. And here is the word circumference. Depends on where you come from, but that's the spelling for circumference. We're going to talk about the most important part of a circle, and that is the center. The center is a very important part of a circle because this is where we'll start drawing our lines that we're going to use in our calculations. So the center is also associated to drawing lines that run across the circle and lines that also reach the other end of the circle. So the radius is drawn from the center up to the far end of the circle. So that is the radius. It's a very important line that we use in our circle. And after the radius, we also have another line that is drawn across. Now, the diameter is a line that is interesting. We use it to calculate the area of the circle, and we also use it for other calculations that we can see in the next lesson that is going to come. So, the diameter is usually double the radius. So you need to double the radius to get your diameter. So the diameter is also another important line that is drawn in a circle. All right. So we can move on now to how do we calculate the area of a circle. So the symbols that are used when calculating the area of a circle are pi r squared and the standard formula that we use is 22 over 7 and 3.14. So depending on what you are calculating, what determines the, the, the formula you're going to use is the numbers that you are given. Okay, so we'll still come back to that. But first of all, let's finish with this and see what they represent. So this is pi r squared. And this formula has been developed by many other people who've developed mathematics. 
the Greeks used it, and many more other ancient people used that, that formula. Then ARA stands for radius. ARA stands for radius. Now, if you check here, I've written ARA equals D over 2. What does that really mean? It means, remember, I talked about the diameter. The diameter is double the radius. So when we write D over 2, it actually means you can get the radius of a circle if you divide it by 2. So these are some of the symbols that I use when you are calculating the area of a circle. And then we have also pi, as it is written like this, is a word that actually represents the symbol that is on top there. So these are some of the symbols that are associated with the circle. So how do we calculate the area of the circle? Like I said, pi will be equals to 22 over 7, or meaning it's an option. It's an option that you, are, you have to take, or 3.14. Now, 3.14 is a number that is infinite because it has other zeros that comes, other zeros and other digits that come after the 4. So you can use both of them, but specifically when we are in standard 6, we use these two, and it also depends on how the question has been asked when we calculate the area of a circle. So you can either use the first one or the second one. It's up to a person's choice, but you have to be careful. You cannot just use any of those without considering which number you've been given. And this is what I'm going to explain. When we use 22 over 7, we use it usually when we have multiples of 7. So what are we talking about? If we have multiples of 7, let me just write here. Let me do that. If this is my 7 and we have multiples, it means 7 is our first multiple, which will be followed by 14, which will be followed by 21. I'm putting a comma so that I just separate these, followed by 28, and then to be followed by 35. And we can add on and add on the multiples will come in succession. They'll come in as much as you can. So when we have a question and the moment you check your question, if the radius is any of the numbers that I've written down, it means you're going to take 22 over 7 as the formula that you're going to use. So let's go to see if we can do the first one as our example. And like I gave you an example, we have 7 as our radius. Seven centimeters is given in our circle and we need to calculate the area of this circle. So we need to find out which formula are we going to use. But that shouldn't worry you a lot because mostly when questions are asked, they actually give you what formula you are going to use. The examiners and the teachers are very kind. They will tell you, calculate the area of this circle, use pi 22 over 7, or 3.14. They are very specific about that. So in this case, suppose there is no instruction given to you to how you calculate this area. So definitely you know to say, I'm going to use 22 over 7 because multiples of 7 use 22 over 7. So let's start and see how far we can go. So I'm going to write my formula, pi r squared and I want to actually emphasize something. When we write our formula, we write it not just for fun, we are writing it so that we remember what we are doing. And if you check very well, R squared is not the same as double. Because when you say R double, it means my seven is supposed to be 14 because I'm going to double it. Instead, R squared means seven times seven. So we are given already to say 7 is a multiple. We write our equal sign there. Then we're going to write our 22. We're going to write over 7. And then we're going to put our multiplication sign. 
and then we come back to our R. Pi represents 22 over 7. R represents the 7 centimeters. So we multiply by 7 by 7. Okay, so when we reach this stage, we are going to now divide. 7 goes in there once. 7 there gives us 1. And then now we're going to multiply 22 times 1 times 7. So we need to be very careful. If we've arranged the numbers properly like this, we don't need to lose any marks by calculating wrongly. We need to actually know what we are doing. So there's no harm, there's nothing wrong with taking your time. If you are not good at the tables, you can still write your 22 separately. You put your seven there, you multiply, you do that, and then you can go ahead now. 7 multiplied by 2 will give me 14. We carry 1. And most of the people, or most of the children, write 1 on top so that they do not forget. Or they write somewhere, they circle it. But please do not forget about that 1. It's important because you need it when you add on to the answer. Then you multiply 7 times 2 again. It gives you 14. That 1 which you carried should be added to the 14. So that gives you 15. So you write your 15, draw the line there, put your centimeter squared. So this answer should come to this. So you must write this answer there, and that's how you get your answer correct. The next example will follow the same procedure, except that this one, the number is bigger, so we have to be more careful when we calculate this area. So we're going to say again, pi as usual, we put our two there, then we substitute where pi is, we use 22 over 7. So where pi is, we are going to use 22 over 7, and then we multiply by the radius, which is 14. Multiply again by 14. We haven't doubled the 14, we have multiplied it two times, then we can say, 7 there goes in there once, 7 there goes in there two times. So after you've divided 7 into 14 and it gives you 2, it's now time to calculate the answer. So we're going to say 14 times 2 will give us 28. And it's the 28 that you're going to multiply with our 22. So you write your 28 there, you write your 22 down, draw the line and show multiplication sign. And then now you can proceed. 2 times 8 will give us 16. We are going to carry 1. 2 times 2 will give us 4, plus the 1 that we carried will give us 5. Then we go to the second column and continue multiplication. 2 times 8 will give us 16. And then we carry the 1. And remember, you can write it somewhere so that you don't forget. 2 times 2 gives us 4. 4 plus 1 gives us 5. And then we can draw our line like that. And then we can add, show the plus sign there, add a placeholder this side, and then we can add. 6 plus 0 gives us 6. six 5 plus 6 gives us 11. We carry 1. And then we add 1 to 5. That gives us 6. So our answer will be equals to 616 centimeter squared. So this is the answer that you get. So there are many examples that you can give. So boys and girls will continue with the last example that I'm giving you. And I hope this one will be easier for you because at least I've given you two examples. So we still continue with the same formula that we are using. So we're going to use 22 over seven multiplied by 21, multiplied by 21. Okay, so the numbers are bigger, so this is the reason why we have to be a bit more careful. So we're going to see how we're going to calculate that area of this circle. So I'm going to say seven there goes in there once, seven into 21 goes in there three times. So I have 22, I have three, and I have 21. 
So we can multiply those numbers and see how much we get. So the easiest way is to multiply 22 by 3, which gives me 66, and then I'll multiply it by 21. So we're going to say 2 times 3 will give me 6, this side. 2 times 3 again will give me 6. And then I'm going to multiply it by 21. After I've multiplied 22 by 3, it gave me 66. I'm also going to multiply 66 by 21. And then we're going to continue and see the answer that we're going to get. So 6 times 1 will give me 6. 6 times 1 will also give me 6 there. Six, 2 times 6 will give me 12. And I'll carry my 1. Remember what I said about the number 1 which you carry forward. Any number that you carry forward, do not forget where you placed it because you still need it to give you the final answer. 2 times 6 again will give me 12 and the one that I carried gives me 13. If I add it to 12 and I'm going to draw my line like that, I'll put my addition sign so that everyone knows what I'm doing. Then I'll add my 0 and then I'll continue in my additions. 6 plus 0 will give me 6. 6 plus 2 will give me 8. And then 3 plus nothing. There's nothing on top there. So I'm basically bringing the number down. And then 1. Then I'll draw my line. And I'll write my centimeter squared. So this is the answer that we get when we multiply this circle. So it's very easy for you to practice. But you can try it at your own time. I'll leave you with this last exercise that you can do at your own time. Try to practice and see how far you can go and see if you can get the answer. But remember, we said a circle has important concepts that you need to learn. And these are circumference, the radius, and the diameter. They are very important when you calculate the area of the circle. You also need to find out when you are given a circle, which formula you are going to use. Because apart from those two that are given, there are no any other formulas that are given. You either use 22 over 7 or you use 3.14. But what determines what you use is the number that you are given as the radius. So this is why we're going to end our lesson today. And I hope you've paid attention and you've listened and you've learned a few things from today's lesson. Please practice this and try your best and please Stay safe and stay learning. Bye-bye and see you next time. Make sure you catch the same time, same place. You are watching Primary Catch Up. My name is Lokwa Malala Bata. Stay safe and stay learning. Bye, friends.